Hey everyone, Oak Norton here with Scripture Notes. It's been a while since I've done kind of a comprehensive scripture study session video, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to share some things with you that I've been learning and studying the last couple weeks and just kind of how to do some advanced stuff uh, as you're studying the scriptures. So uh, what I was doing that got me started on this, I was actually reading in First Enoch down here, uh, and I came across this verse in First Enoch 45.1. It says, and this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the holy ones and the Lord of spirits. And I thought to myself, hmm, well, who are the holy ones? And I wanted to do a little digging on that. And so I started off by just pulling up a search pane. And I'll just show you here. I did a search for holy ones just in quotes, so it would only find the results of that particular phrase. And there were 34 verses, and I can see you know, where they are at over here. And as I scroll down, um, I think there was, I, I removed this one from the life of Christ, because that's not like a, an ancient text. It's a, a, a great book written by uh, Frederick Farrar. But um, these were the verses that got me started. There were 33 verses. And so I, I clicked on create collection note up here. And I'll just call this Holy Ones demo because I've already got a collection note going. But I'm going to demonstrate how this works as I go through. So I started to uh, take a look at this. If, I, if you hit control F in your browser, you can start to type uh, a word or phrase and it will all light up across your browser and so that's just a function of your browser it's super handy when you want to skim down through scriptures like on a, on a page like this where you've done a search and you want to find all the results really quick so just for vernacular uh, this left pane is a search pane the middle one here is search results and the one on the right is a collection note that uh, i've created now so up here, I can start to type notes as I go through these verses. Well, the first thing which I was super happy about is there's a verse here in Daniel, which means it's super easy to click over here and go to the Blue Letter Bible website, which is where I can look up the um, Hebrew or Greek words for that verse. And so if I, I'll go ahead and click Blue Letter Bible, and I'll click Strong's up here at the top. And when I do that, it inserts these Strong's numbers. Uh, James Strong was, if you don't know, was this awesome theologian a couple hundred years ago. And he went through the Bible and identified every word in the original Hebrew, well, you know, as far back as the documents he had, the Hebrew and Greek, and indexed it so you could say like here's everywhere that this word appears and how it was translated so when i look at this verse and i see the holy ones here is a single phrase and it relates to the hebrew i think that's 69 22 if my eyes are <laughs> seeing that properly so i'll click on that reference and now i go to this kiddish and i might be mispronouncing that but i could click this button to to find out what that is. And this particular word has been translated 13 times. It appears 13 times in the Old Testament, and it's been translated as saint six times, holy four times, holy one three times. Now, I did a search for holy ones. So I, what I should have done, and I, I typically try to do, uh, is I take into account variations and you can e either do that with a wild card or I could just say or holy one now the, the, I guess the reason that I didn't put holy one is because and this is probably obvious the holy one is Jesus Christ and and that will appear all over in the scriptures and I wanted to specifically not find references to Christ in this I'm I'm curious what Enoch was talking about 
with regard to the holy ones that were besides the Messiah. And so that's that's actually why I did not do that uh, in that example. So let me jump back over here. So Strong's shows, like I said, uh, saint and holy and either holy one or holy ones. And so I can, I can go down here a little further and find some more information about it. But in essence, the word saints, when it's used in the, the scriptures, is talking about the holy ones of God. That's, that's another meaning for the word saint. And we can see that right here with this word, Kadesh. And on the Blue Letter Bible site, it's, it's really cool. You can go down here and it will show you those verses. You can click to those verses and open it up and see more, uh, you know, whatever references you want. You can, you can still continue to study. I can hit Strong's up there and, you know, again, dig into these verses. Uh, for now, I'm going to go back to my Scripture Notes site. Now, I, I could be making notes up here at the top. I could also expand this and make notes uh, in the verses next to each of the verses in my collection. Um, I would also tag it up here like saints, you know, holy ones, you know, however I want to save that and then update it. Okay, so that's how I got started with this. Then what I did was I started to think, well, if I've got holy ones, what else would help me identify this group of people in the scriptures? And I thought, well, another phrase, let's open another search pane out here. Another phrase would be sanctified ones. And so I did that search and that pulls in three references. Now, one of the cool things here as well is I can click this bulk copy button up here and I can select all the verses in this result or I could have individually selected them. And this little drag point changed instead of this icon symbol that's like a, a plus sign with arrows, it changes into a, a, a layered document showing there's more than one item. And then I can just click there and start to drag that and bring it right over here to my collection note and it goes from 33 to 36 verses. So it's really easy to organize your study set of verses. Okay, besides sanctified ones, then I started to think, well, what else, you know, would I search for? And um, I can't remember exactly which verse as I was going down through um, that kind of tipped me off to this. But I, I had this idea for uh, or, or saw this phrase, the holy something. And I, and I thought, well, I guess it's just the holy ones. But maybe it seems like there was something else. Anyway, as I thought about the holy, I thought there could be several words after that that would be of interest possibly to this particular search. And so I got this idea and I'm just gonna show you what I did. I did a search for the holy and this is gonna pull back quite a few results. And this is one of the things, the great things about scripture notes. I've got 1600 results in this column. Now there's, I, I could uh, filter out some of these, like, you know, Jesus the Christ is a book, the life of Christ is a book. These others are apocryphal writings. Down here, this is a uh, text from an individual, Parley P. Pratt. And so I could, I could do a little bit of uh, filtering, but I'm just going to show you what I did so you get this um, idea. I hit print report, and all of the results are here on this page. It's a huge list. You can see the scroll bar over here you know, just whipping down through 1,600 plus results. I took that and I copied it into memory. You can do that on your keyboard with Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac and then copy it. And I opened up Microsoft Excel and I pasted it in here. Now, once I had it pasted in, it was all in column A. And I just, I widened it. it 
it's best to like widen the column before you paste otherwise it goes really narrow and it creates huge height on the uh, the rows but however you do it uh, that's what I did I got it in here and then I was I was thinking there's got to be a way to extract the holy and the word after it into the cell next to it now I use Excel all the time I'm an accountant and this is this is my tool but that's a complex text calculation so I actually opened up chat GPT and I said chat how do I if I've got all of my data in column a and I want to extract the words the holy and and I said actually the three words after it because I wasn't sure if maybe you know like the holy son of God is a phrase that would be three words after it so I thought well I'll I'll start with that length and see how it goes and I said to chat give me the formula that I would paste into column B in order to extract that from column A and you can see the formula it gave me up here it's it's I'll double click this um, and you can see this formula right here and it is not something I would have ever figured out uh, to how to do and so it was awesome to just have chat GPT give that to me and uh, then what happened was it actually was only it did it wrong and it was only giving me two words after the holy and not three and and thankfully I could look at the formula and say well there's a five out here or it was actually a four and I thought maybe if I just change that to five it will correct it and it did so I was really happy about that and I copy pasted that down the entire column and then in Excel you know you can um, if, if you don't know Excel I can't this is not an Excel tutorial but I selected that column copied it into memory and then I pasted with the paste special and just pasted in values so if I were to copy this and say okay I want to paste it here there's this paste values and so it dropped in the text just everything that had been calculated by the formula as text and then I was able to take that column column C sort it alphabetically and then uh, use this other thing over here to remove duplicates and so what I wound up with was a column full of these short phrases Alpha, I alphabetized it and then I just started to go down and say what are the phrases being used you know okay the holy angel I was not interested in that particular phrase for this search uh, the holy anointing oil got all these results and anyway I I got a list by the time I was done skimming down this list there's about a dozen items that I had collected which I thought were worth trying to do searches for and so I did like the holy seed the holy sons the holy spirits uh, the holy women the holy offspring and so I, I did those searches put the results back into my collection note it's over here and you know just drag them in as I went through those uh, various searches and so that's that's where I've got now 58 verses in here and you know now I can study this in a little bit more depth there were other things that I also brought in um, you know but that's just things that you can uh, start to experiment with and um, you know as you as you're digging inspiration will come and you'll uh, be able to put this together in the way that um, you know makes the most sense to you so what I did next was I thought well I want to actually share this collection note so make this an example video and share this collection note out with other people and so I clicked on this CM button up here at the top now with a, a collection note you have a master note you've got verse notes down here below that you can type into and those do not get shared but the master note will be shared when you share a collection note and this little button toggles between my regular verse markup of my own okay however I've done my scriptures you can see this is brown and red text there 
if I click that, this says I want custom verse markup for this particular collection note. That gets shared. So the master note gets shared and the scriptures get shared and the custom verse markup if you want to share a collection note that way. You don't have to mark it up in custom form, but I just decided I was going to do that. And so now what I would do is I would click the share link up here at the top. If this was done, if I was like, okay, I'm, I'm all set to share this. Now I would come in here and I'd say, I want to make the collection public. So I can just share this with people privately and not not put it in the public section on the website, but I'll show you what this looks like. By the time I actually have this video posted live, I will make this public. So you'll be able to go find it there. Um, I could also make it read only. I don't like doing that, uh, but some people might want to say, I don't want anybody to ever change my collection note. I think that's this should be rare. That's the comment that I've put into the system because you're essentially saying you can save it you know, somebody else can save it to their collection notes, but they can't edit and change any of the, the text or add their own comments to it. And so, and then it um, also shows how your name appears on here. So then I would generate a link and it would actually put it in the public section of the collection notes. Now, here's uh, the collection notes right here, collection list. Your collection notes are going to be appearing right here in this section, my collections. When you share a collection note, anything that you have shared will appear here. And then you can click into it. You can turn sharing off if you want later. You can just find what you've shared. You can search for it here and everything. Uh, and then the public section is what anybody is sharing. And so you can see there are people that are, are sharing things regularly out here. Um, I'm not actually sure, so there's probably 50 or 60 uh, collection notes that have been shared out there. And you can go out there anytime and uh, find those. And when when you click this link, sorry, when you click the little eye icon next to a verse, it will tell you if it's been public, if it's in a public collection note as well as your own, and then you can actually find collection notes that way. So when you are looking at a particular verse, you might say, hey, I wonder if somebody's included this in a collection note that might be something I want to study. You can click that little eye icon, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see if there's any public collection notes that include that particular verse. So um, I think that's really all I wanted to share in this video. That's just kind of a look at, you know, did a little bit of uh, complex um, filtering there using Microsoft Excel and ChatGPT, but that gives you an idea of, of what you can do. Now, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do in here. You could come in and say, you know, for a particular verse, whether it's in the canonized scripture or apocryphal texts, you could come in here and say, hey, what does this particular verse mean? You can ask Daniel. Uh, you can go to the AI assistant, ask Daniel about that particular verse. It will, if you click from the verse, it will know which verse you are kind of keying off of. And then you can ask questions and get some pretty uh, cool answers that might allow you to dig in a little further. There's some preset questions on here. And so if you look at this and you're like, well, I want to know you know, what other scriptures and ancient texts would cross-reference to support this particular verse? Or, you know, just ask your own question down here. So lots of tools, lots of ways to dig into this and, you know, save your work so that you can find it later. And again, if you have any questions, I, I love to get uh, emails that have questions in and happy to turn them into little tutorial videos for people. So go ahead and, and hit me with your uh, questions. Happy to explain how to better use scripture notes so that you're sure to get more out of your scripture study. Thanks for watching.